Okay, morning. ladies and gentlemen, good morning, welcome. Morning. Right, I'm going to start shouting if people don't be quiet, please. It's always the same one. I went to the all stare at us, you'll soon stop. Let's all just be really quiet and wait for Barbara to stop talking. Oh, hello! I heard that. Good, good. Oh, I'll take your time. Welcome to the last Connect of the year, our carol service. Um, I'm going to do some thank yous now because I should forget later. Thank you for Tim, for all that he's, he's doing for the setup, and for Pam, probably done it just as much as Tim, probably. For these amazing guys at the back here, um, it's brilliant to have live music. Uh, thank you to everybody that's been helping to get this ready. I uh, hope you enjoy it. There's lots to do. Um, you should on your tables. There should be some craft to do if you're feeling crafty. There should be some quizzes. If you're feeling clever, we'll get the quiz answers later. We're going to have lots of singing. There's cake, there's tea and coffee. Um, it's just great to see so many of you. Um, in case you haven't seen, Santa was here. We've actually had two representations of Santa, and they're both here. You can work out who they were later. Um, but it's brilliant to have you here. Um, it's brilliant, especially to have Katie. Welcome. I, I was panicked a little bit when they all rushed you. <laughs> but, yeah, good, welcome. Um, we're going to start off by lighting our Advent um, crown here. Remy's going to come and light that for us. So Remy, you write all, all the ones around the outside. And I'm going to say it. Right. Yeah, look. You can just keep going. Come back to it if you need to. Keep going. There you go. Heavenly Father, the whole meaning of Christmas can be explained in one little four-letter word, love. You sent your gift of pure love to us that first Christmas. Love descended from heaven to be born of the Virgin. Love laid in a scratchy hay of a manger in a meagre barn in Bethlehem. All of your love, God, was robed in the delicate skin of a baby and wrapped in swaddling clothes. The final week of Advent helps us to reflect on the magnitude of that love that was made manifest in Jesus. Amen. Okay, well, you should have words for the, the carols. If you haven't, try and share with somebody. We, there are some more at the front if you need them. Um, but I, I encourage you, if you're able and would like to, to stand. Because we all sing better when we stand. And you, you can't hold your phone and text just as much. So if you're willing to, please stand. And this amazing group are going to start you in our first carol.
just noticed the way the music started at the beginning of that video, and, and the music group just kind of emerged from the back of the room. It was beautiful. I've never seen anything so balletic. It was great. Um, we always have connect um, a list of prayers, a list of thank yous, and I think we couldn't have a, a connect, even if it's the carols, without mentioning some of those things we've been praying for. Um, first thing I want to mention is we, we are so grateful to our keyboardist this morning, because... It's been touch and go the last few days whether he was going to get here or not yeah. because your dad's still in hospital. Yeah, he's got pneumonia, yeah. But he was recovering quite well last night. Things yeah. were looking a bit better last night. So his name's Roy? Roy. Roy. Say, so yeah. we need to pray for Roy. Yeah. Um, Graham's here. Um, as I say, his dad's in hospital. He's um, recovering from pneumonia. Um, but we, were, we should have also had a percussionist up here. Um, that's Ben. That's awesome, yeah. And that's Graham's son. So yeah. please pray for them as a family because... Mm-hmm. There's been, there's been every year there seems to be something that keeps you yeah, from being here, doesn't there? So we are so grateful you're here, so thank you for that. Um, some of you remember we were praying for Barry, one of our former trustees, who's uh, head of a uh, part of a church up the road in Lenson's, in Lenson's Lane. Barry had to have part of his lung removed, if you remember, and they were testing for cancer and all the rest of it. He came in yesterday. It, was, it looked like one of those moments, you know, almost like in the, in the jungle when they tell you how many stars they've won. I'm like... He said, I've got some results. I'm like, yes. He said, I'm clear. Oh, so yeah, the yeah. cancer is clear. They do, they have found something, which they think could have been TB at some point or something. They're still doing tests on that. And he'd got to go back yesterday for another appointment because the lung hasn't fully inflated. So they said if that remained a problem, they may have to put a drain back in just to help the lung inflate. But uh, you can see he's struggling. Um, it's obviously he's not going to be back to full health for quite a while, but continue to pray for him. Um, it's wonderful to see Katie. We've all been praying for you every week, Katie. And we, I heard from Amanda yesterday. Uh, Amanda's recovering from the operation. She does have to have more treatment. Um, that She's going to talk to the, um, the team about that in the new year. Um, so they, at the moment, there's not a plan in place. But she said she sends her love to everybody. Um, she does miss being here. And, and on and on and on. We all know. There's, it seems to be that list gets longer every week so my encouragement to you all is this christmas spend a bit of time just giving it to god whether you pray or not pray just try this this time it's not hard you don't have to do that thing that you see when they do on the telly you know the hands together knees on the floor if i did that i'd still be there now i'd never get back (laughs) again um just talk just talk in your head doesn't even have to be out loud because i can assure you he's listening he is there he does answer and so thank you for those who have prayed over the last year it's been a tough old year, but what a year. 40th anniversary of City Mission. Um, I, I think at one point we weren't sure we were going to get there. It's been a very long year. Um, but there's been some remarkable highlights with different stuff going on over the year. And thank you for those who've been part of it. Um, it's hard not to highlight the giving tree this time of year because obviously it's the last thing we're doing. But um, we have seen a ridiculous increase in numbers of the giving tree this year. It's just how I feel. <laughs> um, we 1400 and something 1411 children we've blessed with toys this year um, the thanks goes to God really uh, you know because there's, there's been a lot of moments this year where we weren't sure we were going to do it but 1411 children there's still some bags to be collected because people sometimes has, have problems in, the, in going on in their lives so they were hoping they'll come today and tomorrow to a couple of other venues to pick up. But that is ridiculous. I mean, it was 1,200 and something last year, and now it's 1,411. So it grows and grows and grows. But we're so grateful for what people provide, the way people pray, the way people support, for people dressed as, as Santa. I'm really sorry to you, Santa, we can't find you. He's not looking happy, Sarah. That's a real, that's a real Santa. Is it? Yeah. Well, he spent most of the time yesterday introduced himself as John, so I'm not <laughs> sure it was. Um, <laughs> John, I'm teasing you. I'm teasing you. You've, you've ruined the surprise now. I didn't know it was you. Have you got that paint off your head, by the way? No, I'm still there. What's that? I have no idea what's going on there. Um, but yeah, it's been an amazing giving tree to see so many people smiling and having great fun, talking to Santas and seeing the elves and just leaving with a smile on their face. You know, some, it's interesting sometimes when they come up to the table and, and they interact with Sarah and Sarah says, are you not stopping to see Santa? And there's a real, not sure. And then they go, oh, yeah, okay. 
and then they don't come out for about an hour because they've had so much fun. Um, so thank you if you've been part of our 40th year. Uh, we believe God has got much, much more for us to do. Um, hopefully I won't still be here in 40 years. It'll be Sarah running it by then. Um, <laughs> oh, if anybody who was at the thing knows she runs it already. Um, but it is, it is down to you guys, your prayers, your support and your energy that helps us keep going. So thank you for that. Um, I just wanted to say a few words um, about this, really. You know, we've just been look, watching the videos, and I kind of picked up on, you know, the first candle represents hope, and we all need a bit of hope, don't we? We all need hope in the world, because we're going through tough times, whether that's internally, as a, an individual, as a family, or just in the world, we need a bit of hope. And the hope that Jesus brings at Christmas is the hope that I hold on to. And peace, the peace we can have in our heart, if we know that even in spite of everything else going on, you've still got Jesus. To me, that makes a big difference. The amount of people, and it's, I'm going to mention Jill, she's not here, but she's going to watch this at some point. Hi, Jill, wherever you are. I forgot where the camera was then. Um, um, Jill was up in um, the north now, living with family, and she's having a great time. But I know she misses being here. And I remember when she lost Marsh, she said... Without Jesus, I don't know what I would have done. She had a peace in her heart that came because she knew Jesus. So the second candle brings peace. And then we get to joy. And I don't think anything's quite as joyful as singing carols. There's just something special about people together singing carols. Most of us know the words, although we panic a bit when it comes to about the third verse. And when you don't sing the fourth verse, it messes everybody up. I know Jesus isn't born today, but he wasn't born on Christmas Day anyway. <laughs> I can't count to four, sorry. It was, uh, you just kept me going, well, it says four hymns, yeah, it's yeah, your fault. Right. You type them out. Oh, and oh. Not not More counselling that later, don't worry. <laughs> that corner for prayer, that corner for counselling. Um, but yeah, the joy uh, that comes with carol services, nativities. You know, I was talking to my brother the other day, and he said he'd just seen his kids in the carol service and the nativity, and I said, was it good? He says, brilliant. He says, the only difficulty is that Ronan just stood there yawning all the way through it. <laughs> because the kids are exhausted. Yeah. But actually, it can be such a time of joy. Yes, we're going through difficult times and we've got things that kind of come up as memories and, you know, things that we kind of uh, maybe breaks our heart a bit at Christmas. But we can still have the joy that Jesus brings and this season brings. And then it becomes this, the last candle we've, we've lit, which is this week, which is love. And to me, that is the story of Jesus being born in a stable is all about love. And I just want to look at two or three little moments of love to kind of explain what I mean. Um, I want to talk about sacrificial love to start with. And I want to think of Joseph. Joseph and Mary. You know, Mary kind of, the angel arrives, talks to Mary, Mary kind of goes, okay. You know, I think if any of us who are married made a decision without, you know, chatting to our loved one. I don't think it would go down as well as jo it went with Joseph. You know, Joseph just felt inspired when he, he too obviously was, was spoken to by the angel and, and he just kind of went, yeah, I'm not going to dump her. I'm not going to walk away. I'm going to support her. My love for her remains, not only for her, but for this child. That isn't mine, but I will raise like he is mine. And, you know, if you have, lots of people say, what was Joseph like? He's not talked about in the Bible really that much. But I want to say to you, if you look at Je Jesus, you can see Joseph. Because Jesus didn't come fully formed, did he? He was a child, a baby. He spent the first many, many years with, Jesus, uh, with Joseph at his side, becoming a carpenter, becoming a man. And so not only was he affected by God, his, his heavenly father, he was affected by Joseph. And so Joseph's sacrificial love for Mary and for Jesus is an inspiration for us all. You know, sometimes things are hard. Sometimes it, loving people, loving situations, loving, you know, what you do can be hard. It's a sacrifice. But we need to look at Jesus as that example. That if he was willing to sacrifice himself, if Joseph was willing to sacrifice himself, it probably wasn't his hopes and dreams. To marry a girl and father somebody else's baby and all the rest of it, it was probably not his plan, but he did it. And Mary did it, and it was a sacrifice, but it can be an example to us all. I also want to think about that idea of parental love. 
Mary's love for Jesus. You know, she just loved him, adored him. You know, being a parent is tough. Through good times, through bad times, through hard times, through times of letting go, it's tough. But actually, Mary's love for Jesus is an example to us all. That idea of parental love, that idea of giving yourself for your kids. And Mary, even though Mary really, you know, in the back of her mind knew what was coming, she loved Jesus like no other. And just encourage you to hold on to your families, hold on to your loved ones, whether they're your kids, your, your family, your friends. Hold on to them this Christmas. Show them how much you love them. And the third one is, is unconditional love. And that kind of comes down to why Jesus was even coming. Well, no, nobody really expected him to arrive as a baby. They expected him to arrive as a king, as somebody who was going to come and change the world. And he did. But it took a while. But when he did, he changed people's lives forever. He met the disciples. He met lots of people and shared that story with people. And then what did he do? He did the ultimate. He died on a cross. Willingly stepped to a cross, spread his arms wide for everybody, unconditionally. He didn't look round and go, not you, not you, not you. There's a book written by an evangelist, and it says on one page, there's just one line on a page, and it said, God loves everybody in heaven. And you read that and you go, yeah, I get that. And you turn the page and it said, God loved everybody in hell. Because God didn't come for the ones he, he, we choose, the ones we think are good, the ones we think are not so good. He came for us all, and we get to make a choice as to whether we follow him or not. So I want you to remember that Christmas is great. Christmas is about the birth of a baby, but it's actually really about a cross that that baby died on. Don't miss that opportunity this year to accept that love that Jesus brought at Christmas and shared with us all at Easter. So don't miss that opportunity today. And finally, the idea that once we do have Jesus in our heart, that love for each other that we need to share. You know, Christmas is one of those great examples, isn't it, of, um, of a give, we give presents. We like, does anybody like receiving presents these days? Yeah, not that, they're probably all lying, but uh, there, there are some people going, no. I, I really struggle to, to receive presents. I like buying presents, I don't really like receiving them. But it is, it's interesting seeing people how we get a present and some people can be very, mine, it's mine. And others want to share it. Yeah. Um, and Jesus, we need to hold on to him and keep him for us but actually he calls us to share with others. And that's why we do connect, and that's why we do a lot of what we do, because we want people to know that we are here to show the love of Jesus, to help them in ways that they need help, to walk alongside them, but actually that actually Jesus can help them too. And so I want to encourage you that, you know, if you don't know Jesus, give him a try this year, because you won't regret it. Um, but if you do know Jesus, it's our responsibility to share him. If you go into a carol service, who can you take? If you go into church on Christmas Day, who could you tell? I remember when Andy and I used to go, we used to go out for Sunday, Sunday lunch with some friends before we had children. And at the time we were going to a church where it always ran late. And every time we met them for lunch, we'd have to apologise. And what did we do? We'd go, oh, I'm really sorry, church was, oh, it just went on and on and on. Because that's what you do. But actually what we should have done was like, I'm really sorry it's late, but church was amazing today. We, we just heard more about Jesus and the white. And we, did, we never did that. And I regret it to this day. I just want to encourage you that actually God's love is real. And that um, we love you. We think you're amazing. But Jesus loves you even more. So bless you. Have a great Christmas. Um, we'll go through one of the quizzes in a minute. But one of them I think is far too long. So the one with the pictures on, we'll do in a minute. The other one with all of the anagrams or whatever they are, take them with you and the first connect in January, which is the 11th of January, if anybody brings them back and gets them all right, I'll give you a prize. Emphasis, there's lots of people heard that, all right. Don't just bring it back and do one, Tim. I know, I know I'm watching you. Now, if anybody gets them all right on January 11th, come back to connect, I'll give you a prize. Um, Bless you. Thank you again to the group. Would you like to chasse back the way you chasse, chasse down? 
See, what you don't realise is Michael is now famous. He's, he's, he's playing Andrew Ridgely most nights as a one tribute. And so th that's why he walks like that, Lee. It's the tight, it's the tight white shorts that you have to wear. I don't. You don't? <laughs> Bless you all. Thank you, guys. to buy advent calendars this year because because their days are numbered that's why we needed the percussionist here uh, so look let's find a few more how many letters are in the Christmas alphabet 25 why <laughs> what happens to the man who stole all the advent calendars he got 25 days. Right, last one. Why does Santa have three gardens? So we can ho, ho, ho. Well done, Sheila. Brilliant. That's enough of that. Right. Um, but just before we go, we're going to light the middle candle. Because if you like that on Christmas Day, but I'm not coming. I love you all. But there's not a hope I'm coming to light that on Christmas Day. Um, Remy's going to come and light it. What we want to give you before you leave, actually, we've got a few presents to give you because it is Christmas, we want you all to take a candle. This is the adults. Do not give children candles. Um, take a candle for Christmas Day. Put it somewhere in a, somewhere safe and light it on Christmas Day. We also have... Has it gone out already, Ron? Keep going. Keep trying. He doesn't want to be lit before Christmas. Keep trying. Keep going. I'm going to keep talking. We also want you to take a prayer home with you. The prayer is for Christmas Day. Um, I'm not going to say it now, because you want you to take it, I want you to light the candle on Christmas Day at some point when you get a moment and read the prayer, because that is to me what Christmas is all about. But we also want to give you some other stuff. Um, oh, yeah, Paul's going to rub two sticks together. <laughs> oh, he's cheating. That's cheating. That's cheating. You can tell he's a granddad, can't you? <laughs> 
No, you haven't got wax on that table. <laughs> there you go. Man. See, Santa knows everything. Um, so don't forget to take a candle and a prayer. We would also like, if you haven't had one, that's my glasses gone. If you haven't already had one, we have some Hope magazines um, that uh, talks all about Christian stuff, but especially about stuff at Christmas. If you'd like one of them, we've got some of them as well we can give you. Um, a local church, not far away from here, um, made some bags of... Kindness. kindness. I've been calling it everything else but kindness. <laughs> uh, bags of kindness. And they were to be given out to people um, at Christmas, and we're running out of time. So I thought, who better than all of you? So if you are an adult, please, we've got a bag of kindness for you. You can have one each. We're not taking them home for other people, so take them for you, one each. They're all different. So don't come to me and go, I've got this, I want that. <laughs> right? There is no returns policy. <laughs> so please take a bag of kindness. We, as you leave, we'll, we'll give one. And then as a family, if you, if you are in one house, we've also got some fancy lint advent calendars. For my, I've never seen my father-in-law wake up so much then. He heard the rattle of chocolates. <laughs> Of We'd love to give you all some of that to take with you. There's more tea and coffee, there's more mince pies and stolen and everything. Please have some more. We've run out of cups, so you're going to have to use the cup you've got. Bring your cup back. <laughs> and we've ate all the stolen. No, that's why she's been in the kitchen. Um, thank you all for being part of this. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, have a great Christmas. We're not back until... We're back on the 9th of January, but we're not actually kind of back doing this and the cafe and the shop until the 11th. The 10th, there will be man's breakfast, there will be building blocks, and then the 11th, it's everything else. John, do you need a tinkle? I just wanted to say something. Are you coming up? I'd just like to thank Darren and Sarah and all the staff yeah, and the here volunteers here for all the hard work, especially over the last two weeks. And I'd like to thank them on behalf and Paul and myself for the privilege they gave of being part of it. Yeah. And to see the joy on the children's faces yesterday was just magnificent. And I'd like to thank you for that. Fair way way to watch that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, thank you, John. And if anybody knows of any good paint stripper to get the paint off John's head, I did at one point thought the wig had stuck to his head and it had caused some irreparable damage. But but, but it is. Thank, thank you, son. Oh dear. Um, it is a privilege to work here. It's hard at times, but it is a privilege. And you know, I've got an amazing team around me. Um, and whether they be paid or volunteers, it is an honour to stand alongside people and serve this community and much, much wider. Um, so thank you all. Um, we're going to pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity of coming together today to just remind ourselves of why we celebrate Christmas. Yes, it's fun to dress up as Santa and give presents to all of us, but Lord, if it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be doing it. Help us this Christmas to remember you. And the reason you came, the reason you... Um, shared with so many people your love and the reason you died on that cross for each one of us. Mm. Lord, as, as we light that candle on Christmas Day, may we remember the true story of Christmas mm. and the love, the hope, the joy and the peace that you brought. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you all.